Hey friends, Karen Pennington here, and I'm going to ask you first some honesty. Be honest here. Have you ever gotten something that wasn't put together and you needed to put it together and you looked at the instruction booklet and it felt like it was written in Japanese or German or something and anyways, just looking at the booklet, you go, okay, no, I, I can't do this. And so you tried to put it together on your own without following the directions. Have you ever done that and ended up with multiple extra pieces at the end and didn't know where they go? <laughs> I bet you have. I bet a lot of us have. If we're over 20, we probably have. Um, I know I remember putting together a bookshelf. I actually did try to follow the directions. It took me seven hours because I'm so bad at that. <laughs> so bad at that. Now, some people are pretty good. They can figure it out. But let's be honest. Sometimes we really, there are directions that should be followed. Uh, other side of the spectrum, have you ever seen directions that were so simple? And so you tried to do it on your own and you missed something big. You missed that one bolt in that one place. You missed that one. Oh, that's why that part was supposed to be there. Because... We refuse to follow the directions. We can't do it. I mean, it's funny. I'm going to throw my husband under the bus again this morning. I'll tell you, I'm very good at following simple directions for making things because I do not consider myself a cook. I'm not a great cook. But I used to be, like, awesome at making, like, instant mashed potatoes. I don't even like instant mashed potatoes, but I can make them because there were, like, three steps. Uh, microwavable mac and cheese, uh, you got it. That's I don't eat that either. My granddaughter does. Simple instructions are good, but, you know, sometimes we don't follow instructions because they're complicated. Sometimes we don't follow instructions because they're simple, and so we add stuff to them. And sometimes we end up with a mess because we're not following the directions because we like to do it our own way. Um, now, I'm an out-of-the-box person, so I'm not saying it's evil to, for instance, put a shelf together without following the 435 directions in the guide. Some people can do that. But there are some directions that we shouldn't ignore. And there are some very, very simple directions that we often just forget. And we go further and further away from it. And then we get mad. And this morning I'm actually talking about our prayer life. Um, I was in a prayer meeting last night. And we were, you know, seeking out God and seeking out not just, we weren't just seeking, like, God do this for us. We really were trying to do what God asked for, things that God wanted us to ask. And we were directed to the Lord's Prayer. And I realized how many times what I'm really asking for isn't really according to God's prayer. I don't know if it's bad, but it really shouldn't be my focus. And it's one thing to humbly ask for something you want from God and something you want from God and say, God, you know, it'd be great if I got this, you know, God, I would love to get this job. You know, Jesus himself in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he prayed, he said, God, if it's possible, let this cup pass for me. It seems like a pretty reasonable death request to say, God, please, if I don't have to, please don't make me die a horrible death. That's it. I mean, seems like a good request to me, right? But then Jesus said, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So he went to that cross without a single bit of bitterness. He was honest. He had integrity. He was scared because he was human. But he was willing freely willing and loving because he was God. So I'm going to go through a lot of my prayers. Um, some of my prayers are, God, help me look good. I usually mask it as, God, let me help you look good, which is still good, but like, help me perform well, God. I, I want to do well at this. I want to do well at this. Um, help me maintain uh, credibility. God, I, I don't like it. This person has spoken against me. Lift up my name so that people know I have. I still want a good name. I guess uh, it's not it's not a bad prayer, but I get pretty mad when I my integrity is called into question because I'm an honest person. I say, uh, God, this is what I think needs to be done. Can you please go do it? Our simple prayers can be masked as that. I say, God, make things that want happen. Um, I don't like it that this person's sick. You got to make them well. Is it any? There is there anything wrong for praying for healing? Absolutely not. 
but God, you better make this person well. God, why didn't you make this person well? I prayed that you would make this person well and you didn't. God, I prayed that you would help me win this case and now I'm in trouble. Now I, I had a time, once I lost a job and I was actually, had an incredible amount of integrity in the job and the thing they accused me of was actually a federal crime, the very definition of the crime. Like it was a crime, but then they fired me and I, I didn't do it. In fact, they were the ones that were doing it. It was horrible, it was a horrible situation. And yes, that happens. And I was very mad at them and at God, because it's like, God, you were supposed to maintain my, you were supposed to show people that I have integrity. I have integrity. You were supposed to uphold my good name, you know? And I'm like, vindicate me, vindicate me now. And I was never vindicated in that particular situation. It was actually very closed because they didn't want people to look at it because everything they did was wrong. But there was a lot of bullying and there was a lot of, that's, I mean, it was a horrible, horrible, unjust situation. I'm like, God, why did this happen? And, um, we say, God, keep us from harm. Keep us from joblessness. Keep us from poverty. Keep us from homelessness. It seems like a pretty good prayer. There's, there's nothing wrong with that prayer. Um, and yet these are my main prayers a lot of times. And I return to, you know, the original Magna Carta template for how we should pray. And it's funny, whereas I don't think there's anything wrong with praying for these things. It's okay to bring these desires before God and lay them at his feet, but they shouldn't be the foundation of our prayer. And here's the prayer that I read. This is a little different translation. This is the Common English Bible. Uh, Matthew 9. I'm sorry. Did I do this wrong? Let me see. It's Matthew 6. I got everything backwards. Matthew 6, starting with verse 9. Let me change that. It says, pray like this. Literally, Jesus says, pray like this. Where I'm going, God, uphold my integrity, uphold my credibility. Help people understand that I'm honest because I didn't lie and I didn't do that wrong. First part of our prayer should really be our Father who's in heaven. Uphold the holiness of your name. We want God to fight for us, but we don't fight for him all the time, you know? We say... God, bring me into a place of wealth even and security and prosperity. But Jesus says, bring in your kingdom so that your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, we bring our laundry list. It's okay to do that, like Jesus did. But when do we say, God, your will, your will, show me your will, do your will, help me to see your will so that I can uphold your will. Um, and yet we do my will instead of thy will. It says, uh, we say, God, I want that good food. I want that good job. I want that good house. And yet Jesus says, give us the bread we need for today. Oh my goodness. You know how many times we've been in situations where we knew how we were going to pay for today, but literally not a week from today. We've, we were so close. And very rarely did I say, thank you, God, because you've always given us me and my bread, bread for today. Usually it's like, we're back here again, God. I don't feel stable. I don't feel secure. Why are you doing this? You can, this can't be you. Why are you doing this to me? And, and yet we're supposed to be grateful for every day's bread. You know, I pray vindication, vindication, vindication. Expose my enemies. Bring justice. Okay, so that's okay. But what our focus is supposed to be is forgive us the ways we've wronged you. I'm reading this straight from scripture, by the way. That's my, forgive us for the ways we've wronged you. Just as we also forgive those who've wronged us. Man, was that hard. When I was fired and I was being, I was the one being honest and I was fired and they made it look like I was the dishonest one when they were being dishonest. I never lost a job like that before. I've always been a good worker. I've always been honest. So to lose a job for doing exactly the thing I was supposed to be doing by people who weren't, that was hard. And I really wanted to be vindicated. And someday, God will. But instead, I was blessed in other ways. And here's the one that really got me. Verse 13. We say, lead us into prosperity. We say, lead us into security. We say, lead us into safety. We say, God, may nothing bad happen to us. 
Nowhere in scripture are we told that we have a right to expect that we're not going to ever be in danger. Nowhere in scripture does it say that we have a right to expect that we will thrive in the way that United States of America says thriving is. Nowhere will it say you'll never lose your job if you trust in God. What it says that we should pray for is don't lead us into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. So sometimes, have you ever noticed the very things that we pray for are what would bring that? I've seen friends whose marriages have fallen apart because one or both of them have sought out careers that they thought would make them happy and provide for that family. And that very thing, seeking that and seeking that and seeking that above God's will is what tore their family apart. Jobs aren't bad, but seeking that deliver us from poverty. That's, we never, never, ever, ever does it say in the Bible that if you trust in the Lord, it's not going to be hard sometimes. But here's the thing. We can thrive. We can be joyful. We can have all of these things. We can ask. When I say, vindicate my name, God. When I say, this is my desire, God. Give it to me or change my desire. When I say, I want this person to come to you. When I say, fix this. When I say, bring me into a place of greater prosperity. All of those are good. All of those are great. But it's got to start with this. It's like trying to grow an apple tree from the fruits down to the roots. We got to be rooted in this, right? And I realize that and I repent. Lord Jesus, I repent. It's not very often that my greatest prayer is lead me not in temptation. It's very often that my greatest prayer is tell me what to do so I don't have to worry. You know, it's funny, this is the same, you know, Matthew 6, just a little bit further down. Jesus gets to the heart of it. Matthew six twenty five. Therefore I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink or, what, or your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? And then Matthew six thirty three, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Ha, huh. I'm going to use the, I'm actually read the Bible, use the translation I have. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. There's a psalm that puts it a different way. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And then there's 1 John 5. I love this verse. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have in our relationship with God. If we ask for anything in agreement with his will, in agreement with his will, he hears us. He listens to us. If we know that he listens to whatever we ask, we know that we've received what we've asked of him. So you hear the difference here? If we start with what we want and try to put that into God's will, we're going to be frustrated. If we start with God's will, if we start with God's glory, if we start with lead me not into temptation and let that be my foundation of security instead of lead me into security and that let that keep me from temptation, it's backwards. When we do that, we get what we want because we want God. So we might not have a mansion, but God may give us abundant joy in that little shack we're living in. I live in a really torn down house. I'll just tell you, this house is so old. There's so many things wrong with it. I don't know that I want to live here the rest of my life, but, but I'm happy in this house. And it took a long time for me to come to this place because I wanted other security that I didn't get. And maybe I will someday, but when, our, when we place our prayers and our security and our hope and our foundation in the things that we think are right and we decide that our faith in God is going to be based on that we are going to end up empty and angry because one way or another our desires are going to be messed up but when we seek God first 
when we seek his kingdom first, when we say your will be done first, when we say I'm going to forgive and ask for forgiveness before I start pointing the finger first, when we say give us our daily bread, give us what you want us to have first, then our desire shifts and it changes. And not only do we get that blessing, but God gives us more because our hearts become ready for it, you know? It's a great way to pray. So let's pray that. You know what? Not even my words today. Not even not even my attempt at seeking God. Oh man, I just absolutely missed this. I want to pray it according to it's a new translation, a fairly new translation. The Common English Bible. Matthew 6, 9. You can say it in your own words if you want. Our Father who is in heaven, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring your kingdom so that your will is done on earth as it's done in heaven. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us the ways we've wronged you, just as we've also forgive those who've wronged us. And don't lead us into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Thank you, Lord, for your will. Thank you, Lord, that when we ask according to your will, we know we're going to get it. You'll always satisfy. You'll never disappoint when we're asking and seeking according to your will. And that's where our hearts are. In your name. Amen. Be blessed, my friends.